Right. Yeah, that's the yeah that's the most important consideration. That's that's what I always uh, if you encountered me in uh, social media posts or in uh, matrix communities or whatever. That's I always stress this this part that if you and we also um, stress this part on the uh, IVPN website as well that you need to trust the uh, the VPN provider more than your ISP. Mm -hmm. And if you don't trust your VPN provider, then you shouldn't use them at all. It doesn't matter if they have uh, anonymous signups or you can pay Monero, they will have your IP address. Uh, so the, if they want to log what, what you're doing, you know, it, if they choose to do that, um, they can do that. So, uh, and that's that can become a problem for you. Um, so that trust has to be there uh, for you to start using a VPN service. And the other part of this is that uh, and essentially, people who say that you shouldn't use a VPN, um, from their perspective, they are, they are, I mean, commercial VPN providers for privacy. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN a privacy-focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. CakeWallet and iVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you, and supporting us is easier than ever by typing in monerotalk.crypto in your CakeWallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Victor Vecce of IVPN, a privacy-focused VPN service that can be purchased with nothing more than an email address and a Monero payment. And we can say with pride, one of the sponsors of the show. Victor discusses the story of how the work of the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the ideas of Grateful Dead's John Perry Barlow inspired him to change the course of his career in marketing, the role of trust in choosing a VPN provider, addresses the common arguments against the use of commercial VPNs, and highlights the importance of auditability. The two also discuss their thoughts on the slippery slope of tyranny, governments utilizing spyware against civilians, internet service providers' data collection practices, the case for anonymous transactions, and more. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Victor, what's going on? Everything is good. How are things in uh, New York? Ah, New York. It's all right. I mean, it's hot. I guess the whole world is hot right now, right? Yeah, same here. Same here in Hungary. Yeah. And... uh I don't know. We, we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to start talking about global warming. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Let's get into the meat of things. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming up. First of all, thank you for the sponsorship. Thank you for supporting the show, man. Great. Yeah, no, no worries. It yeah. was a no-brainer for us. So, yeah, I appreciate the show and uh, and your and the stuff that you put out. So, yeah. So, so we nice. say, uh, what what what's your position? You want to kind of give a quickly introduce yourself and sure see what you do yeah so i'm part of the ivpn team uh we are a privacy focused commercial vpn service and uh yeah i'm uh my official title is head of communications but uh i kind of wear many different hats uh we are a small team so i uh i do a lot of uh, mostly non-technical stuff so my background is uh actually in marketing but uh i, I got really fed up with all the, uh, let's say, classic marketing stuff, modern marketing stuff. So uh, for IVPN, I do like research and writing, uh, work with the communities, social media. And yeah, just trying to like work on signaling our values and uh, improvements, product improvements, talk to people. Yeah, so that's, that's my role. That's really cool, man. Um, so were you involved with them from the beginning and then you had different positions? Or? No, yeah. So I've been been around for uh, more than ten years now, and I've been here for more than four. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, most of our team uh, members are with us for at least four, four or five years. We have pretty good, pretty tight team. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm kind of long, uh, like long timer myself now. So, yeah. How did you become a part of it? Is this something you were interested in that you wanted to become a part of? You saw an opportunity? 
Yeah. So, um, as I said, I, I used to be a marketer. I used to I used to work in the uh, adult industry. So I was working on uh, different websites that uh, distribute uh, materials that are not really uh, suitable for minors. So uh, different tube sites, uh, paid sites, different different stuff. And uh, yeah, there is a big operation here in Hungary, uh, which is one of the biggest tech tech companies that that work in different stuff like cam cam sites and stuff like that. So I was really interested in going into tech and uh, advertising and working in English, get, get, getting into this whole global uh, working environment. So this is where I started, and um, I've done a lot of uh, advertising. Um, like big budget uh, campaigns, which also involved using a lot of personal data. So this is where it kind of, um, kind of started. So we have uh, we had the, like big databases spending uh, a lot of uh, time and resources to uh, optimize that and getting uh, getting into the uh, streams of people. So. Um, getting getting as many eyeballs as possible. So I've kind of like uh, um, I hit a point in my life where I I was thinking about my impact in the world, let's say, and I wasn't really comfortable with the adult stuff anymore uh, for different reasons. We can get into it, but perhaps that's that's a little bit off topic. But also the the, the uh, privacy aspects as well. So I've done research on this. And I really wanted to find something meaningful uh, to as a lot of work as a, as my focus so i was uh, um, at that time i think the uh, co-founder of eff uh, john perle barlow died and uh, i read an um, obituary by chance but i really got into that uh, whole rabbit hole reading the manifestos and uh, about his life and eff and then uh, this ivpn opportunity came along and the uh, ivpn was an eff uh, um, sponsored that so i just saw the logo and I immediately okay so this is probably a, a good fit and yeah, at IVP, I was looking for a, a marketer, but uh, it's, we've kind of uh, figured out pretty early on that IVPN doesn't need or want to really like this classic marketing, like churning out ads and like uh, trying to do Facebook ads and email marketing and stuff like that, because the whole business and the whole values are just uh, not a good fit for that. So. So we have kind of like a change course. I change course and it's a, it's a really good fit because I, I'm very comfortable with this, uh, uh, just um, communicating what we do without any kind of fluff and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, bullshit. Guys, so. uh, certainly do that very well. I think that's what makes you, you know, uh, attractive and competitive for a VPN, yeah. right? It's like, yeah, it's everything you would possibly want in that service. You want to talk about that a little bit? What, what exact? I, I have so many questions. Uh, I guess before. Yeah. We go ahead. When? So when did you first? When did you read that those essays? Uh, what, what's what was the guy's name? Uh, uh, John Paribalo. He was the guy. who was like a lyricist for Grateful yeah. Dead, and he was him. a rancher, and like his uh, he was a really weird, like good weird dude. I saw him yeah. speak in New York City. Really um, nice. nice. I, at the time, I was working on a project called Gov Together. It was okay. just, you know, a crazy startup with uh, kind of change the world type thing. I wanted yeah. to implement uh, a more improved democracy through our current republic. Okay. So it was novel at the time. Nobody was really talking about it in these terms. So the idea was I wanted to get somebody elected to office to, you know, to Congress, actually, U.S. Congress. Yeah. They pledged to then vote in Congress in accordance with how their constituents would vote on each issue. So okay. the technology. So I, this was, uh, I don't know, this is a while ago. I mean, this was, I guess, over, this is like 10 years ago. Okay. And because I was into that, I was going to these meetups in the city uh, for like government tech, democracy tech. And I went to uh, a meetup where he spoke. And he actually, nice. I, I didn't know about him before that, you know, I, yeah. I didn't, I was just learning about this space on the go. Um, but he talked, he spoke about, I, I, I think back and he spoke about Bitcoin. He spoke <laughs> about Bitcoin. This is, I'm not surprised. This is 2011, 2010. This was early, you know, it was like the first time. I think yeah. 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 The first 
times I heard somebody speak about Bitcoin. I have maybe heard about Bitcoin, but the first time I actually somebody like explained it from the and it like caught my attention. But I was so involved in my own project. Yeah, I was like, I'm focused on this. I'm not gonna go start. Uh, but yeah, he was. Uh, so I'm curious. When did you when when did you start? You know following him and when, what year was it that you were like influenced by yeah uh, writing? um yeah i remember that he was uh, like a hardcore libertarian so i'm not surprised that he you know, like picked up on the, the bitcoin stuff or you yeah. know yeah i think this was around five years ago so this okay. was just right when when he died so okay. and, and that's that was my in it was kind of like i read like very good uh obituary about but you know just a summary of his life and just like different things and I, I was always interested in like weird characters we have like this mesh things going on like a rancher and like uh, uh, dropping acid and uh, touring with the Grateful Dead and then you know founding one of the most important um, like uh, internet uh, movement you know uh, with others so I was really interested in this and then and that's when I got into reading about the EFF and how, how it was founded and uh, yeah, and his manifesto, like the independence uh, for cyberspace. And yeah, I just really got, got, uh, uh, got curious about, about the, why this is necessary, why, why, um, and, and what really changed since the, the foundation of the EFF, because what were laid out in those early, uh, early manifestos kind of like played out already and and it failed so it was really disheartening to like uh, learn that because the whole whole manifesto is about you know the big weary giants have have no space here you know um, leave us alone you know leave us be leave us you know do what we want to do here and don't take over the space it was like a plea and a rallying cry but it, it didn't really <laughs> didn't really work out you mm -hmm. know unfortunately but it's you know that's that fight is still ongoing uh I guess we are part of that fight. You are part of the fight. Everyone, everyone in the community and watching this is a part of this fight. So, even though you, you might argue that it's played out, but uh, there's going to be new waves uh, in this whole thing. So, yeah, I'm 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 really happy to to say that uh, I'm really uh, geared up to that fight so, and uh, trying to trying to do the best I can to to help people. Uh, get equipped with with, uh, with some stuff. So, so yeah. what what is it about it that really drives you though? Is it is it uh, a belief in, in liberty? I, I know you, you've explained mm -hmm. kind of where you came from. And yeah, you, yeah, sure. You wanted to do something, you know, positive. But what, what is so positive yeah. about this path? What what, what yeah? I mean, mission? what is the mission? Yeah, um, yeah. This was definitely like a trigger. So that I mean, yeah. I think if I think about it, uh, yeah, you need to have some sort of driving force and believe but yeah i, I personally believe uh, in uh, in uh, liberty and just you know generally um yeah i think the 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 best best thing i can i can tell you i have a couple in my head it's a little bit jumbled together but uh, the scariest stuff for me is definitely the the china example so Tyranny. like yeah and what's what's happening there it's really it's not the, it might happen in the future, you know, and uh, there is this um, slippery slope right. that we might get to. It, it's actually happening there. So right. with all, all the data collection, all the facial recognition, all the listings and uh, taking people away without any kind of judge and jury kind of stuff. So that's, that's really scary for me. I mean, and that ties into, you know, the background of Hungary, which before the 90s, you know, we had the, uh, we were on the eastern part of the whole Europe split, and we have the secret police and and surveillance and uh, yeah, and uh, a lot of uh, stuff happening like data collection with the old school methods about people, um, very similar to uh, Stasi and uh, Germany. Maybe yeah, not that. So uh, there's a strong mission, so. there's a strong community yeah. in in Hungary, a contingent of people that are, are strong liberty believers, right? Yeah, that 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 would be a nice way to put it. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, not a strong community. I think I, so. The roots are there, but uh, yeah, this for me, it's it's a little bit like the in the intro, the, the um, global warming for you. If we get into Hungarian politics, we are we're gonna. But the young uh, just... thought it was kind of. There's not a. <laughs> you're you're 
you're by far the minority. There's not there's not a strong group building over there in Hungary. Yeah, I I wish I could say that, but no, not really. I mean, but you know, uh, things are happening here as well, and re- and things are moving pretty fast with the uh, I don't know recession and uh, gas prices and what so. The point here is that I think the whole state surveillance stuff needs to be ramped up in the next couple of years um, to be efficient. Uh, and um, yeah, that, I, I think one of the things that maybe punctured uh, some sort of a hole in the consciousness was the uh, Pegasus scandal. I'm not sure how much you how much you know about that, like the uh, using the spy uh, software on uh, different phones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that 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 happened on a pretty, pretty large scale, and, and Hungary was like a major player in that, like with like uh, uh, journalists, opposition politicians, you know, and like no one takes responsibility for that. It's just it, it's just crazy. Everyone denies it, you know, uh, the the the, uh, the whole thing and why it happened and why it was necessary. And they're using taxpayer money, you know, the, the government is using taxpayer money to go after journalists and opposition politicians. It's just crazy. It's it's, it's yeah, it's. It's, it's getting into this whole China territory that we've been talking about. So for me, that's that's a very big motivating factor in like uh, learning more about surveillance techniques and uh, the whole uh, geopolitical stuff and uh, history and uh, some of the technology as well. But that's again not my not my forte. But uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm picking on this stuff as well. So, so is that? I mean, that's certainly part of the value proposition of Monero, right? Like it's one of the sure. reasons why I so passionately talk about it. I see it as, you know, uh, a potential tool that can be used to, to thwart tyranny yep. in the digital age. Is So is that how you see VPNs or how would you descri- describe the VPN in terms of its uh, ability to help thwart tyranny? Yeah. So I think um, I see there's some... One way to put it is that like uh, these are different tools in the toolbox. So if you're talking about uh, data collection and surveillance and how much ability you have to conduct your affairs in private, uh, there are, there are different ways to get to you or uh, expose you or like uh, start uh, getting information on you that could be used for different purposes that is maybe against what you want or your uh, your goals and uh, like if we talk about the the financial part so the the banking system and uh, um, and the different ways to use these kind of financial transactions which is uh, which is the key key thing here if we if, if we talk about monero i see the same thing with the with the data collection uh, specifically on the isp part so I think the, the the whole problem with the with the ISP data collection was the most important thing online, uh, like five five years ago, ten years ago. Now it's getting a little bit more mixed. Uh, now uh, with the Facebook, Google, all these um, all the tech giants, you know, uh, collecting the data, they have very good tools besides um, getting it from the from your ISP. But but your ISP is still uh, they have the most uh, kind of information, sensitive information, and personally identifiable uh, information, uh, and they can correlate all of them to your name, your address, your phone number, your payment information. And now they see, so for example, the mobile service providers, they have all your browsing history, uh, and they have some other stuff as well, which so you know, putting it all, all that together and selling it to data brokers, which is going on in, in the US is the biggest issue for me in the US uh, in this regard or with the data retention laws uh, you know getting into the hands of governments that's one of the most efficient ways to track someone's um, like uh, history movements online so so I see the 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 VPNs and specifically the privacy focused VPNs because we can get into the like uh, different weeds of like uh, VPNs can be used for different purposes and what they're good for and, and not good for. But IVPN specifically is designed to help with this kind of dragnet surveillance, like uh, ISPs scooping up all the data uh, and uh, doing whatever they want with it in some jurisdictions. 
the situation is a little bit better in uh, Europe. So yeah, so you have that, and then you need some tools to protect yourself from from the likes of Facebook and Google, who are really just uh, getting to that level of the ISP type of data uh, analysis, and even to the level of I don't know seeing as much as as governments do, because we are getting to the territory with <laughs> with some of them. So so I think uh, Monero is very useful and the most useful tool against financial surveillance and, uh, and the VPN is necessary for that, uh, for that, uh, data surveillance. Uh, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I want to, I want to talk to you more about Monero, but, but let's, uh, yeah. let's talk more about the VPN stuff first. So how, sure. how would you, in its most basic form, would you describe what, you know, what the technology is, what exactly, uh, VPN is? Sure. So, um, well, it, when you use a VPN, uh, you connect to a server, which is owned by the um, owned by the VPN company, and the data between your device and the VPN server becomes encrypted. Uh, and then it leaves uh, the VPN server and goes, you know, uh, on the on its way unencrypted. So that's the that's the easiest way to um, to describe it. But uh, what this does is that, for example, your ISP would sit in the middle of these two, so they can't see uh, because of the encryption uh, what is happening, just in, in the context of the main use case that we, we've been talking about. Right, so instead of giving your data to the ISP, you're, you're essentially giving it to the VPN, but they're, yes. you're trusting in the fact that they're uh, yeah. you know, not interested in using that data. Rather. Yeah, that's the... Yeah, that's the most important consideration. That's that's what I always, uh, if you encountered me in uh, social media posts or in uh, matrix communities or whatever, that's I always stress this this part. That if you, and we also um, stress this part on the uh, IVPN website as well. That you need to trust the uh, the VPN provider more than your ISP. Mm -hmm. And if you don't trust your VPN provider, then you shouldn't use them at all. It doesn't matter if they have uh, anonymous signups or you can pay Monero, they will have your IP address. Uh, so the, if they want to log what, what you're doing, you know, it, if they choose to do that, um, they can do that. So, uh, and that's, that can become a problem for you. Um, so that trust has to be there uh, for you to start using a VPN service. And the other part of this is that, uh, and essentially, people who say that you shouldn't use a VPN, um, from their perspective, they are, they are, I mean, commercial VPN providers for privacy, just to, uh, just to clarify the statement. So uh, some analysts, information security uh, professionals and educators say that don't use a commercial VPN service, even if they are the most trustworthy ones and you know them, you know, uh, even then you cannot verify what they are doing. And that's true. So there is no... Uh, way for you, for a VPN provider right now to give you a hundred percent assurance that the code that's running on their server and their infrastructure everything else is set up in a way that they they're hundred percent sure not to log. It's impossible to to verify that to attest to that. So um, yeah, so that's the that's the tricky part. Yeah. Are once again, so, so many questions. So many questions. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That's why uh, you know you you sponsor this show, and I think it align you, what you guys yeah. are doing align very aligns very well with what the Monero community stands yeah. for. And uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm, I'm not technical enough to say okay. why you know somebody should use their VPN versus uh, somebody else's. True. Sure. I saw that those that. I do trust in the community that I know have the you know the technical skills and the true belief in Liberty Tech uh, saw value in what you guys are doing. So it's it's important. It's definitely and the word is getting out. Um, so that that's that's nice to that's nice to see and that you guys are uh, so passionately going down that path. What um, what beyond you know. Uh, those in the community saying, "All right, it looks like these guys are the ones to trust." Like, what, what, what can people actually find trust in? Um, so, what, what differentiates you from another VPN in terms of why uh, it's it's more obvious that you're more trustworthy? What are what are some of the 
the the things that you can look at as a customer to, mm-hmm. to that realization. Sure. Yeah. So I think the uh, the answer depends largely on your level of uh, ability to um, evaluate different uh, technical details, and it depends on your needs, on your threat model. Um, so, but there are some things that you can look at. So if, if you would put IVPN together with like five other VPN providers that you know, uh, you can check some, some basic stuff. And um, yeah, no, for us, I think one of the things is the, is the principles. So how does the VPN provider communicate? Uh, are they saying that you will become um, completely anonymous or you will get total privacy or military grade encryption? Th- these are the marketing buzzwords. So if you encounter this type of stuff, you can be very uh, confident that, you know, they might be trustworthy, but, you know, they are, they're very much uh, built in a way to to sell their stuff to as many people as possible and they and these terms are misleading and they can be harmful so uh yeah and um yeah the other thing is uh which i i would definitely recommend first is checking who are the owners do you know who are the owners are they public facing you know the the company um the actual leadership team and the whole team um this has been a problem uh, it's getting a lot better especially with the major providers, but some were like totally obfuscated. So like a, a couple of years ago, a British Virgin Islands based company is handling the, the, the data for millions of people. I'm not gonna name names, but like big, big, big VPN companies that have come to the light since then because of the pressure from, uh, from, uh, from uh, people like us, let's say, but uh, I don't wanna take all the credit, but yeah, so, uh, um, so yeah, because if they are, transparent that they you can evaluate them you, you know their background you know who you trust you know uh, so yeah so that's that's one thing but if if you get a little bit deeper that might require some technical knowledge or requiring trusting the experts so that's the that's the other part here because so for example audits uh, security audits are very very important because they uh, can verify the claims but they have to be right in scope. They have to be done by the right people. Um, and yeah, and just you shouldn't trust any kind of security audit. But, you know, okay, so they've been audited, but maybe uh, the auditors were really close to them or maybe they, they haven't disclosed all the details. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, the nature of audit is very important. But yeah, I could, I could go on, I could, let's say... Um, there are uh, important things to hear and then... Um... Yeah, what what is involved in the audit? I mean, they're they're just looking at the, the tech and how it's implemented, or they're looking at like to ensure that you're deleting all the lot. Like, what 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 is the, what does the audit entail? Yeah, so it, it depends on the on the scope that's that that was chosen. You know, for for that that specific audit, I can I can tell you the scope like roughly the scope of our audits, and uh, that will give you the answer for that question. So our first audit was a no-logs audit, where you actually gave, uh, we actually gave uh, access at that one time, for this reason, uh, access to the auditors, uh, to, our, to our infrastructure, live access, and that, uh, and their whole mission was to find evidence of logging. And uh, essentially they couldn't, and their whole conclusion was that, yeah, so the, um, the no logging claims set out in the privacy policy of IVPN are true, you know, to to the extent that we could. But you know, there are a lot of um, caveats and like, um, yeah. So, but so that's that's one audit. Uh, an, uh, another audit was looking at all of our apps. So we have made our apps uh, open source, and when they have when we have done that, uh, we have we have asked uh, the auditors to. Uh, Take a look at that code. So for any kind of uh, vulnerabilities, um, and so sometimes it focuses on the actual information security properties. Is it possible to uh, break into it? Is it possible to uh, like do stuff that would uh, make it lose its integrity and like uh, like uh, uh, let a remote attacker, like for example, collect? information on the users and stuff like that so but again uh, this is uh, 
not my area of expertise. <laughs> so this is kind of the extent no, that no, I can no, that's okay. uh, explain it. So. The general ideas out there, you know? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. So that, that that's, that's uh, you know, obviously similar to what takes place in Monero, right? So it's the same, same basic yeah. concepts, right? Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, you have very intelligent people that are building this technology and you, yeah. you, you, it's open sourced, but uh, not everybody can understand what they're looking at when they open up the hood. Um, is there, are there, and I'm sure I think you hinted at it already, are there things that are being done to move VPN technology closer toward this ideal form where trust is eliminated? What, what type of ideas are, are being talked about and worked on? Yeah, so uh, two things that are, are somewhat interrelated. Um, one is like we we are exploring uh, different projects uh, within our infrastructure. So open sourcing the the infrastructure is one step, which we which we haven't haven't taken yet, uh, yet, and that could that could move towards that kind of trust. And uh, there's one project by a uh, competing VPN provider uh, who we really like and, uh, and admire and uh, really fo uh, follow that project um, closely. Uh, that's called uh, system Systems Transparency. Um, and uh, the whole idea there is to run VPN service in a way that where you can actually inspect uh, what's uh, the code that's, um, that's running live. Um, on the servers oh, wow. but uh yeah but that's that's again this is the extent i can i can get into that because i i i, I cannot explain the details so yeah sounds 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 very uh idealistic sounds amazing if it if it, if it works um, yeah but that's that's very very ambitious and very complex project so i'm i'm not i'm i'm not up to speed on the on the recent developments on that but it's not something that uh that you will see next week so yeah. And then the, the open infrastructure, I imagine that's an even hard, potentially harder problem to solve, right? Like open hardware, isn't that kind of, that's a very difficult thing to achieve, truly open, open source hardware? Yeah, again, um, I have to, I have to refer that question to the person working on this problem because okay. I, I, I can't give you details on this. So, yeah. Well, but both, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to see that progress is, is is attempting to be made there. So where where do you ultimately see VPNs, you know, playing a role? Uh, where where do they currently play a role, and where do you ultimately see them playing a role in terms of the, the scope of where we're going with the internet? A big big question. Yeah, um, yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, ultimately. Um, as we as we established, I mean, VPN providers are just uh, replacing the ISPs in this sense. And, uh, you know, I, I can see a future where there is no need for privacy-focused VPNs. I would be all, all for it, you know, uh, because that means that the whole problem of this kind of data surveillance is solved. So uh, maybe the this whole thing is what the ISPs are doing and what we are mainly protecting against are out is outlawed uh, or maybe they have just like stopped doing it because they have no financial or uh, government you know push incentives you know to to do this kind of uh, data collection uh, I'm not holding my breath for that so uh, yeah I don't think that's gonna happen um, so but yeah but the v VPN market and just generally the the, the need for that I think it's uh, it's very mature now so maybe it's not as mainstream as it could be possibly um but i don't think it's gonna go go anywhere so um uh, so yeah i i think the vpns really have like fulfill a very clear role in the privacy toolkit uh, and they are gonna keep that role but again it's just going back to the competition and just like the, the different ways that other other providers are marketing their product uh, there is this issue a little bit uh, with uh, VPN providers trying to find new use cases and trying to like push this product on onto people who don't really need it. Um, which is I don't want to make any direct comparisons, but like there's some 
issues with this in the in the crypto space as well so yeah, yeah. Um, okay, my next question like who, who <laughs> right. using a vpn like so this is interesting so you're saying yeah they're changing their their market they're an attempt to to grow sales yeah maybe affecting the the technology itself is what you're saying too like people are, yeah. yeah i mean but i mean i mean decisions uh, that aren't necessarily based on on the core value of uh you know privacy yeah yeah exactly but this has been going on for a long time so the the biggest companies so like X, uh, express vpn for example they've been sold for like a billion dollars mm. which like tells you this like the how big of this market is and like this it's just almost excessive to like uh just to just to contemplate um but the way they've got there i don't want to i don't want to specifically talk about their strategy but just generally going back to the uh, the question so it started out yeah with the with the privacy problem and especially after the snowden stuff it just exploded the whole whole need for this but then uh, as the market matured and there was more and more um, adoption in this regard there were new use cases popping up and i would separate these two so one is the um mm, legitimate needs which are fulfilled by some of these vpn providers which are very very far from from um, from privacy so for example watch uh, us sports from india or something like that so uh, you essentially vpn into a us server and they and you can access netflix or nfl.com or or whatever so this has nothing to do with privacy and and the people who are using vpns for that purpose maybe they don't even care they, they have no idea uh, about the other other properties and other other aspects. Well, the thing to work when they turn it on, you just don't... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, but the and I think that's fine. And uh, but the the issue for me with that, if I would be choosing a VPN provider specifically for, for privacy, is the focus. So we uh, very very deliberately focus our roadmap and all our improvements and everything uh, to really nail the 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 changes and improvements in the product for this privacy use case so um, uh, other providers who try to do different use cases they might but they might not have that kind of focus and they might not care about audits or they, they might not care about uh, principles as much and, and the other problem uh, which i see is like the um going mainstream with the with the vpns and telling people that everyone needs a vpn so some other providers have been running uh, ads in the uh, on TV in the US yeah, where yeah. Uh, like so. a grandma yeah 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 for sure grandma browsing at home and your grandma needs a VPN and like a guys handing out credit card details on the on the subway and like you know on the subway you are using your phone to buy something no one the the, the VPN actually have you know does nothing to protect that and like without the VPN your printer will be hacked and st stuff like this it's just it's just nonsense so this type of like widening this whole funnel uh, was very important to to get mainstream into this everyone needs a VPN narrative uh, so that's I'm very clear on that that not everyone needs a VPN if you are concerned about your ISP uh, surveilling you then you need a VPN. If you don't care about that stuff, uh, and if you be... someone, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. Finish your thought. Go ahead. No, just so if if, if someone asks me, so uh, I, you know, I want to be safe uh, on my digital path when I'm browsing online. Do I need a VPN? No, you don't. You don't. When you're working at home, you know, it's not gonna do. I mean, okay, not gonna do anything is a, is a stretch, but uh, yeah, it's not gonna worse the investment and the paying. Uh, I don't know. Hundred bucks per year for that? No, so yeah. it's it's funny the way you talk about it. it's like it's like the shit coins of VPNs, you know. <laughs> but they but they serve a purpose yeah. because are they're misdirecting people and they're not making the, the best technology. They're kind of tricky, but they're also bringing them uh, into this world, right? And then maybe eventually, you know, I, I think of like Dogecoin, right? Like you know, it's uh, it's just a gimmick. You know, and people are yeah, for yeah. the wrong reasons. A lot of people, but it's also taking them into the world of crypto. 
Uh, so do you see a positive side of that? Like at least it's like, yeah. I mean, I haven't thought about this, cool, but right? yeah, they're advertising VPNs on, you know, Fox news. Like it's like, it's not, they're making it, they're making it mainstream, even though the, the tech isn't the best. Uh, they're making the concepts mainstream. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, li I like your uh, optimistic take on this. I haven't thought about this. So uh, I, yeah, perhaps I, um, I need this perspective uh, on this. Yeah. And I think, uh, what, what we see, I mean, we don't have a lot of data or any data. Well, some like uh, um, depending on how people signed up. But yeah, what I'm trying to get here uh, is that like we don't have a lot of data on our customers, but on the conversations with customer support and the social media, I know that people, uh, some people come here by ditching their shitty VPN provider. So they actually, you know, they have issues or they talk to people like, okay, so you, you are using X big brand name and someone goes to them like, why are they using what, you know, they, they are the shittiest provider out there. What would just look for a proper one and they give them some resources and they start testing different VPNs and they end up, you know, um, finding the, the best ones, which might not be IVPN by the way, but, um, yeah, so we, so your uh, assertion in this, uh, yeah, 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 uh, in this scenario is true. You're thanking yeah. these guys, you know, they're, they're your market. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, it's very cool that you know you could. I mean, that's that's one thing that certainly stands out about you guys. You could anonymously purchase your service, right? Yeah. No, no email address required, yeah. and you can use Monero for to uh, to check out. Yeah. Are you seeing, uh, are, are there a lot of purchases made that way? Do you, do you have any staff that way? Yeah, so, uh, the, 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 so the two steps here. So the first one is that you don't need an email. That's that's default and we don't even ask it at any point. Awesome. So if you sign up with a mainstream provider, I've tested a couple recently and you know you get hounded and you want to cancel and the email you do you really want to cancel and shit like that. That's just... Yeah, so, so yeah, we don't send any emails. We don't do any emails. So, yeah, so that's default. Uh, and on the per, on the payment side, um, yeah, I just um, want to pull up some recent data that I want live. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so Monero right now for us is the number two uh, payment uh, um, option no. by by. By one? usage pirate, after after pirate after is number one, don't tell me pirate chain is number one. <laughs> no, no, no. Number one is credit cards. I That's all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Monero. Wow. Uh, it beats Bitcoin, but we we've been accepting Bitcoin for a long time, but it but now it beats Bitcoin. Awesome. Um, like why would yeah. you're gonna use crypto to buy? Like then you you already understand what like why you're using crypto for that purpose. So then you're just yeah. Like, Monero, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we are quite excited by that, and yeah, and like really, uh, the reason we have uh, really put a lot of effort into like running our own node and accepting uh, Monero directly, um, and you know these sponsorships is that you know this this whole community and this whole concept is really very close to our our ideals, so we are not. Uh, I was thinking about this a bit, and and what I what I wanted to get across is that we don't sponsor uh, your show, and we don't we don't do this stuff. So we say that everyone who's using Monero uh, need to use it for their crypto transactions and their you know wallets and stuff like that. But but uh, specifically the the whole reason of why we do this and what we want to achieve is just so so uh, well aligned and we use uh monero ourselves it's just uh yeah just a very natural fit yeah man yeah. uh there's a symbiotic relationship there for sure we're, we're, we're part of the same that's right system. do you yeah. when people do check out uh and they're gonna like check out with credit card do you make it uh you know very obvious to them that maybe they want it like you a, pri a more private option that'd be interesting nope no nope, but that's but that's a good idea yeah yeah we've been thinking about ways you know, but people just yeah. may not realize that you know those other options mean that you're anonymously purchasing it 
person. I'm not a person. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, uh, you know, I can I can argue that uh, they might not want to be faced with the uh, information that they made a bad choice so at that right, point. Right, right, yeah. You don't, you don't want to create yeah. friction for the checkout. I don't want you to lose customers because of me, but I'm trying to say. Yeah, so the checkout and they buy the VPN, they were like, you are not private enough. Okay, I'm refunding it. So it's, yeah, it's not, it's not good. But yeah, but... Uh, I'm gonna make a note. I'd, you know, yeah, we'd be thinking about some ways to especially if they this. got some yeah. kind of discount with the, you know, with the yeah, 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 yeah. I know some providers who, who provide a discount. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we we haven't really discussed this yet, but that's a good idea as well. Be so. cool way. Um. Yeah. So then, who do you see as the ideal cut like who should be who, who's not already using a vpn who should like start using one today like who's the who... who's not already using a vpn hmm? yeah like who's who's the the customer you said you know yeah just it's, it's not for everybody's use cases but like who like who should be purchasing a vpn where it's like a no-brainer like you might as well use it and use it for these purposes yeah, I mean, the first thing that popped into my head is that I think most people who need to use a VPN are already using one. Uh, but yeah, but generally, um, yeah, I can just give you like a very general answer, which is if if you are concerned about um, your your data getting into the hands of uh, of uh, data brokers and uh, you know any kind of prying guys, it, it's very easy uh, and very very straightforward to get a lot of information on you based on your on your on your browsing habits and uh, you know if you are if you are creeped out by that then that yeah then you need to use a VPN but as for IVPN specifically um, I think yeah if you if you value uh, the way that we do things which is very open very transparent um, and uh, yeah and then you can what we already talked about is the anonymous sign up and uh, and the XMR payments, you know, if you are within that uh, space and within that uh, frame of mind, let's say, then then yeah, we should uh, uh, we should be a good fit. Yeah, I mean, let's let's be. If you're already using a VPN, then you should use iVPN, right? I think anybody that's there, <laughs> yeah, should definitely use you guys. It's like if you're going to use a crypto, you should use Monero, right? So like all all roads lead to iVPN. We should say. But yeah, I'm yeah, I mean, like people that aren't already using like or, you know, I mean, because you made that comment with, you know, the, the, the grandmother that's watching Fox News, like she's getting, yeah. she needs to use it to protect her bank. Yeah, but exactly. I, it is a good, like, how do we, how yeah, do we can I just add, add one thing? Adopted more widely, because obviously it becomes most effective if every, you know, if the majority of people are using it and it becomes even more effective for the, the initial users, right? So the more people that use the tech, the more private becomes for everybody, the better it becomes at thwarting tyranny. So how do, how do we uh, bring in new, new customers? Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, that's, that's a problem that I've been, uh, I've been thinking uh, about uh, much more in the earlier years mm -hmm. uh, when I was here. Uh, and specifically because you know we we are kind of niche, so I mean that's the that's the kind of problem that the big guys have to nail, let's say. So what we are trying to do is is uh, is building the best privacy focused VPN pro, uh, service, and uh, all our marketing tactics and all all the things that we do are really not focused on uh, like addressing the addressing the mainstream. So. I mean, our product is built in a way, uh, and how we sometimes talk about it is that on the stack, um, if someone with no technical knowledge wants wants to use it, they can. We have many users just based on the customer support interactions uh, that they can just like very easily sign up, pay for it, download it, press a button, and then you are connected. Boom! That's that that's that's fine. So you don't need like a deep technical knowledge to to use it but under the hood it's pretty pretty sophisticated so there are like a lot of advanced options uh, a lot of different stuff that you can do with the port forwarding multi hops and like different protocol settings and uh, yeah so um so our service is 
is built in a way that uh, if someone really wants to find the best uh, VPN provider for privacy, then then we want to be that choice. So I'm not saying it's it's mutually exclu uh, exclusive, but that's not the focus to give that like, take it to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I don't want to dodge the question, so I, I have some ideas. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, for, for us, I think the biggest driver for new customers uh, is word of mouth and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So uh, people that can actually see these kind of differences and evaluate it uh, and check the product and try it and see you know, what we do differently, uh, then they will just uh, start, start recommending it. That's the, I, I, I would say the only way. So we have very strict um, guidelines that, we've, that we set ourselves uh, and that's coming from our own personal preferences. So the, all the all the stuff that we don't like, how services you know, track us and hound us and email us and communicate with us and bullshit us, you know, we have very uh, good uh, radar for this. Personally, uh, you know, with with my background and our CEO Nick is pretty uh, sophisticated, let's say uh, this way as well. So we just don't do any of that stuff, which makes makes which creates a, like a really hard dilemma that is my job to crack, let's say, because how do you get the word out? So, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm ending this answer on a, on a question mark, but yeah, that's the, that's the big question. Yeah. I mean, and just in terms of Monero too, right? Like how do we just, how do we make privacy tech yeah. more attractive to the mainstream or is it just um, people People, it's just education, right? I mean, obviously, we yep. we, we understand yep. the, uh, the need for it, right? We see value in it. Uh, what what do you think is going to need to happen? It's kind of like you know, it's like how do we how do we stop tyranny, right? It's kind of the same question. How do how do we <laughs> wake people up to the importance of these technologies and get them to start using it? What needs is it just yeah. they, like they're they need to be making more like it needs to yield them more money more profit is that the only motivator or are people going to realize that liberty is a valuable thing and they'll they'll start you know uh whatever jumping through hoops for it yeah yeah it's 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 a very hard question i mean that's uh yeah so specifically for for monero uh i feel i'm just i'm just trying to map my like like personal journey and feelings about it uh which i've i've done with the vpn as well just like trying to get like a fresh start like uh look at it from a from from different perspective where you are not really in, in it already not down the rabbit hole no technical knowledge whatever uh, and for monero specifically the question is uh, like the the why is the is the main question and other if you don't have the monetary in, uh, incentives like long-term holder or trader uh, type of stuff, then then yeah, you need to have the ability to use it and spend it. And uh, that's what's missing in, in, in most cases. So, I mean, offline, I mean, of, of course, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with situation in different, let's say New York or like uh, where places maybe people know and adopted crypto a little bit more maybe you see some evidence of like uh, this uh, um, getting more adoption in the the offline space but online i myself can use some services and pay for some services hosting vpn i don't i don't pay for a vpn i used to pay for own service but i don't anymore uh, uh so yeah my point here is that if we can get more and more merchants uh on on our side you know and and make it clear for them the the benefits and the community uh it's kind of like a two-sided like a marketplace problem there has to be uh, supply of these services there has to be demand of these services and you have to kind of like bootstrap uh, this whole thing in a way that 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 you know the two grows along each other so uh, yes that's why as ivpn we wanted to really uh, push this whole thing and and show uh, merchants that it can be implemented very easily, uh, accepting Monero um, directly. And there is actually a need for it, but we are a privacy service, so it's like a very, very natural fit. How do you progress from these? How do you uh, 
uh, get other, uh, other, other, other other type of services, uh, other type of uh, merchants online to um, to accept it. That's that's the biggest question for me. So I, I have Monero uh, and I would be willing to spend it. I don't want to hold all of it for five years, but the options are somewhat limited. So I think, of course, I'm looking at it from like a merchant perspective, uh, but there could be like campaigns, uh, drives, educational stuff, targeted stuff, uh, maybe going into different conferences. I, I would have some ideas, you know, like specifically targeting uh, merchants with some um, some different type of like education and motivational stuff and maybe some incentives to to uh, start accepting Monero and then drive people there to yeah, yeah, yeah. actually spend it. Yeah. Yeah, we've been going to like li more liberty oriented conferences, mm -hmm. such as crypto conferences. Like we went to Libertarian National Convention, we went to Freedom Fest. Yeah, we got another thing. But yeah, it's it's a, nice. it's a good crowd, right? So it's these people that ha have this, you know, strong belief in liberty, and now you're you're explaining to them why they might be concerned about the elimination of cash, right? And when yeah. you talk about put it in those terms, like, oh yeah, no, I don't I don't want to see that. So like, oh, we're gonna need a replacement, and then that's when. You know, can start the Monero conversation. Yeah, I would think uh, receptive crowd, right? Uh, yeah. VPNs would, I think, uh, would fare well over there as well. Talk about that. There's, yeah, that's a good point. The right community, people that don't want government in their business. You know. Yeah, that's that's a very very natural fit. So, uh, dude, man, any, anything else you want to bring up? I think we I think we covered uh, quite a bit. I, I could keep go. I could go. I could go for days. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any more questions, I'm happy to. I'm, I'm happy to keep going. But yeah, I mean, uh, off the top of my head, I don't. How do you? Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll just round off with the with the general convo. So, like, how how you feel sure. about the things today in terms in terms of tyranny and where we're at, and you know the uh, the fight against it, right, with technology like crypto and like the you know VPN you're working on and everything else that you know the cypherpunks are working on. How, how do you feel about yeah. the state of affairs? Yeah, kind of bleak, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, again, just going back to the to the China stuff and uh, yeah, the the other thing that I've been reading up on uh, a little bit more on the on the global scale is the CBDCs mm -hmm. and it's just whole these whole pieces of the puzzle you know it just fits so well into this whole uh, future where like many of these dystopic scenarios laid out in sci-fis and like uh, writings they're just gonna merge merge together <laughs> and, uh, and yeah so uh, so yeah I'm not I'm not I'm not very optimistic just looking at the examples like China and looking at what's happening in uh in my country yeah i mean uh, if the if the things are going to go down as some of the analysts and some of the uh, uh people that try to predict what's what's going on in the world gonna, gonna go down in the next let's say three to five years with the recession going on and uh, um, different stuff happening in the eu yeah there might be a lot of more upheaval uh, there might be a lot of more uh, riots there there might be a lot of more uh, really uh, extremes getting elected on either side mm -hmm. and that's you know that that brings chaos then that that brings opportunity you know for some people so yeah that's that's what i'm concerned about how this whole like the next let's say dictatorship is gonna go you know build up how how, how it's gonna go down and uh yeah I'll what interesting notion yeah go, go ahead, but in terms of their you know attack on liberating technologies so uh you know, they're, they're obviously don't want to see, you know, a technology like Monero succeeding, right? Um, Definitely. What, 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 any, any predictions there with regards to... <laughs> yeah, not, not qualified for that. But like, I mean, just looking at the EU, I mean, they are very s s smart and they know they get it now. So they had time to analyze and see how, how this all fits together. And you know they can they can find the, these choke points. They can find the you know banning, uh, you know the exchanges, forcing the exchanges, forcing for KYC, uh, you know the off ramps, killing the off ramps. So um, 
you know, I don't think it's going to die, you know, and uh, if, if I would need to make a prediction, it would be something like there will be like a, a stop in adoption and growth, maybe just kind of like a winter kind of scenario, uh, specifically with Monero and privacy coins. But then it's going to just like uh, uh, get, get, get adopted in like grassroots level by the mainstream slowly. That, that would be my prediction, but you know, that's just... Uh, very yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. poorly educated guess. No, 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 that's kind of how I see it playing out as well. Um, Interesting. How about how about VPNs? Uh, I mean, are you guys under under attack? Is there is there threat from you know state actors? You know? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just in terms of like hacks and stuff like that. I mean, one thing is we are pretty small, re relatively small. We are big enough to uh, give you the ability to blend in with the crowd so we are not uh, super small but yes yeah, so we are not really on the on the radar uh hopefully we're not gonna be on the radar and stuff are they ever yeah yeah that's yeah that's the that's the that's the other side of it mm -hmm. i mean um so i i don't think that any kind of vpn regulation is in the works right now i've read recently that uh, um there were some issues raised so two things one is uh I think the FTC might might do, start to do some like uh, making comments on the state of VPNs, uh, and specifically the Wyden, you know, the Democrat uh, senator from California, right? Uh, I'm not sure about his title. Anyways, um, he's he's uh, he's been raising some alarm, but it's it was mostly about the um, like the uh, misleading practices, the advertising stuff, and like how you know, uh, because if you not much about the hiding the user data. No, no. I mean, um, specifically, what they want is to is to weed out the bad actors in the VPN space, and uh, like try to give the option to people to to use it for their their purposes, but they don't want more and more unknown actors so i mean one big problem because this this uh, is already in like this whole geopolitical um uh, like uh race or geopolitical um, tension it's too like uh, there are hundreds of free vpns uh, in the app stores specifically on android but they are available on ios as well with millions of users and installs uh, which are owned by Chinese companies, and you know it's very hard to untangle which is the state owned and like what is the relationship there because you can argue everything is somewhat state influenced there. But uh, but the point is that like they have a free VPN, uh, they put like a paid subscription in there for the you know just to to make it a little bit seem a little bit more legit, mm -hmm. but the whole business model is just like get, getting all that data and just like mm. storing it and yeah so they they see everything so these kind of issues are going to pop up more and more and there there i think at some point might be regulation uh, but I, I wouldn't expect that it would be very extreme so something like if you live in the us you, you can only use a us based vpn with us servers and stuff like that it would be more around like guidelines so if you are selling your stuff in the US or uh, advertising in the US, you need to adhere to these kind of like uh, guidelines. But yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I, I just Googled. Yeah, so yeah, you're, you're right. It's widen. So this is widen, a, a yeah. new story, right? This is only a couple of days. Yeah, this is, this, this is very recent. There is a uh, like a working group for, uh, for uh, VPNs. Uh, I think it's a closed group, so I'm not sure. I don't want to like... Um, advertise it for people to join and stuff like that. But uh, there are discussions going around uh, specifically uh, like uh, giving more options for people, people uh, like at-risk users, better obfuscation technologies. And one of the topics that we are going to discuss is uh, is ethics and transparency and like these baselines. So there were uh, previously, there were some industry efforts um, to uh, 
try to weed out, you know, the the bad actors, separate the weeds from the chaff, and see like who's who's who is trustworthy, because it, it's it's notoriously hard to evaluate uh, VPNs, and there is a lot of bullshit out there. So, uh, and a lot of affiliate paid, uh, propped up, uh, like uh, misleading information out there. Mm -hmm. So there is some um drive there's some ideas to uh, coming from the inside and and with the help of uh, security analysts and security educators uh my my personal uh, this is a, this is a personal like a uh, pet peeve of mine too there should be some kind of like standards there sh should be some kind of like baselines set out and if your provider at uh, adheres to these and ticks off the, that checklist so transparent ownership audits uh, no trackers on the website, no trackers in the apps. And so there's this, this list that you could like very kind of um, objectively make. And uh, the providers who fulfill this criteria, you know, they are on this list. And if you're not, uh, don't fulfill that criteria, you're not on this list. And everyone should know that list. And, you know, that's that would be like a very ideal outcome um, for me, for, for people to evaluate. Yeah, yeah VPNs. Uh, you should reach out to the, to the senator. Uh, you know, should, yeah, that's know that's a good that idea. You guys are the ideal, the ideal version. What she's looking for. I, I found it interesting. One of the things they mentioned in the article is, uh, you know, the reason, one of the reasons she's given why she's concerned about this. So a VPN allows a user to establish an encrypted connection between their device and a private server, making it harder for the third parties to access their online activity. With the abortion becoming illegal or restricted in several, oh, yeah, okay. more people are looking to conceal their messages and search history as police can use this information to prosecute someone seeking the procedure. So that, that's really interesting. And so it's like what we're talking about. So here's one of the catalysts that could push more mainstream adoption yeah. of privacy tech, yeah. right? Oh, Definitely. You start to use a VPN now because you don't want the whole, you know, the the state to, to you know, come out trying to get a certain medical procedure that might be illegal in your jurisdiction. Yeah. Are, do, yeah. Do we have some... See any growth in usage uh, over... Any, over the last couple of weeks, I mean, it was it was certainly a a, a big deal in the U.S. in terms yeah. of people motivated to. Yeah, yeah, we had some journalists uh, reach out. There were some stories which we in which we got featured uh, as like a, um, there are a few dependable VPN providers out there, and IVPN is one of them. Kind of you know in the framing of Roe Ro versus Wade, mm -hmm. uh, repeal stuff, and um, yeah, we. I, I haven't seen any kind of like big big jump in this. I would expect again that the the people who were not concerned about this or didn't know about VPNs and just jumping into this now, I think they would they would they would find the mainstream ones. And this ties back into my problem and generally the the, the problem of VPNs who don't want to uh, spend a million bucks on Facebook ads is that. You know, if you type into Google best VPN, you will get a shit ton of uh, affiliate uh, sponsored uh, results with uh, with some good and some subpar choices. So, yeah, just one one thing I wanted to add to one of your earlier earlier comments. Uh, you were very, very uh, nice and generous in uh, framing it the way that that all roads lead to IVPN. I know it was a <laughs> half joke, but. Uh, but yeah, but just was very important uh, in this context as well that which I usually say that, uh, and I, I, I very adamant about this when I talk to people. We were we met at uh, the uh, MoneroCon conference, so uh, and I had a lot of conversations with people uh, who were using different VPN providers. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they were asking me about that. Like, okay, so you're IVP, and I, I see you here. We've been talking about this, and you know, I, I trust your judgment. I'm using this provider. What do you think? And you know, if, and if they told me like shitty provider, I told them ditch them today. You know, here is a gift card. You know, <laughs> try our service or try a different service. I don't care, but don't use them. But if they said a provider that I trust personally uh, within my framework of evaluation, I told them keep them they are fine so my point here is with this whole just this just tying back to this whole uh, like list of checklist you know the who are the providers who are doing the things the right way uh, i would just tell people that to try to find the, the 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 one of those four or five maybe six providers that are doing most of the things or all the things right uh, and and use one of them 
that I, I, I'll be happy personally. Uh, you don't need to use IVPN. You can use uh, some some other other provider close to us, but don't, don't use any of the any of the other uh, any other other big guys. So, yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my recommendation. Awesome, man. No, uh, you guys you guys come across as as very genuine and and in it for the for the right reasons. So happy to hear that. Yeah, man, and. Uh, Monero, Monero Con was awesome, right? In Portugal, so, so yeah, so many great conversations had over there. Yeah, yeah, you, it was really good for me to get out. I, I mean, getting up uh, from you know in front of the screen after a couple of years, just like meeting people again. That was that was excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Where can uh, where can people learn more about you? Learn you know uh, anything you want to put out there. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, IVPN.net is our website, and uh, yeah, we are on. We have a Twitter account, Mastodon, Reddit, and we are quite active. I'm, I'm myself quite active in a couple of like uh, matrix groups around privacy. So yeah, I'm happy to happy to chat about our service, or you know, any of these things that we've talked about, or you know. So yeah, we are. We really want to. Get feedback and improve, and yeah, if you if you wanna test the service, just uh, send me an email, Victor at ivpn.net. I will. No, no, wait. Then he'll get your email. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just uh, okay. With it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't 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 make me. Yeah, I was just thinking, have I have I done something really bad? But I can. I was just checking. You know, all the bad things that could happen. Now it's already out there. It's fine. Yeah, but you got me for a minute. <laughs> All right. All right, man. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy to happy to converse and uh, yeah, send out some some test test accounts or anything. So yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it was really nice. Uh, nice talking to you about all this, and uh, yeah, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, man. And thanks again for the sponsorship. Sunita and I both greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it was Great. a pleasure meeting you in Portugal. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I hope to see you uh, soon. Maybe at uh, Monerotopia. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. I don't know where it's India. Going, but, uh, India? Know. Is it going to be India? We, we were tossing that around. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard it. Yeah. We, we've been tossing everything around us. I don't know. I don't know. Might end- <laughs> New York. Would you come to New York? Yeah, definitely. I have, I have friends in New York, so okay. and I haven't been for a long time, so that would be a nice tie-in, oh, I guess. Because awesome. some people don't want to come to New York anymore, you know. It's like really, yeah. Okay, but, but is it like more, more like a U.S. thing, right? I mean, just like the whole uh, dynamics, right? Uh, or definitely even from outside. Even from outside, though, yeah, the people are, right. uh, you know. Okay. It's like not. It's not very crypto friendly, New York. Definitely not Monero. Friendly. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It's, uh, very le- very left leaning. The state of New York. <laughs> We're trying to push it okay. back the other way, which is part of the reason why we, we want to try to do Monerotopia here. Maybe we could help in that effort. All right, man. Greatly appreciate. All right. It. Well, anywhere it's it happens. Uh, good luck with the with the choice and the preparations. I'll I'll do my best to be there. So. Awesome. Victor, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.